What is a Python decorator? What is the added advantage of using a decorator in your Python code? How does the syntax work? Can you pass parameters inside your Python decorators? How can you debug a Python decorator? In this video, we are going to answer all the questions. Python decorators allow you to alter the functionality of a function, method or class without having to modify it. In this video, we will be specifically discussing about function decorators. Let's understand it further through an example. Here you can see I have defined two functions. One adds and the other subtracts. Very simple. Let's say I also want to calculate the time it takes to run these functions. For that purpose, I have defined another function called calculate time. I am using the time library to calculate the start time and end time of running a function. Thereafter, I should be able to figure out the time it takes to run any function. So let's say I want to experiment with the add numbers function. All I need to do is call the calculate time function and pass in the function for which I want to measure the time. In this case, the add numbers function. This is going to return me the time it took to run the add numbers function. And there it is. Right? Notice two things here. One. We are using the calculate time function as an extension of our other functions. We are not only exercising our required functions, but we are also calculating the time it takes for the function we are interested in. Number two, every time we need this additional functionality, we have to manually pass in the function name. This is kind of useless and becomes a hindrance. What we want to do is make the calculate time function universally applicable. So every function we write, should automatically calculate the time it takes to run. Of course, you can do that by using this small piece of code everywhere, but that would be just repeating ourselves and therefore completely unnecessary. This is where Python decorators come in. By using Python decorators, you can easily modify or extend the functionality of a function without having to manually pass them through a separate function. So let's go ahead and understand Python decorators. Before we do that, we need to dive into some additional concepts of Python function. The first concept that you need to know is that you can pass functions as parameters inside another function. I mean, we have already seen that example. Here you can see I have defined a function calculate time and I'm passing a function as a parameter inside that function. And within the calculate time function, I'm actually executing that function. The next concept that we need to be familiar with is the nested function. So here you can see inside calculate time, I have defined another function called as func and I'm basically returning the addition of two numbers. And then I'm basically calling the function from inside the calculate time function and I'm executing this function. So this is the concept of nested function that you need to remember before we jump into decorators. The third thing you need to know is functions can also return function. For example, here I can say if I have a calculate time function and inside the calculate time function, I have defined some other function. I can easily return function like this without any brackets. And then when I say result equal to calculate time, we don't need the debug. And here I can print print result 10 comma 5. Now if I run this we are going to get 15. So basically functions can also return functions. So it means functions generating functions. The nested function here has access to the variables in the enclosed space, right? For example, here if I say put a random variable a and I pass in 10 and then here if I try to print a, you can see that Python first prints out 10 and then it goes on to do its normal thing, what we have asked. So basically we can access the enclosing variables from inside a nested function, also known as the concept of Python closure. If you don't know what Python closure is, go ahead and check out my advanced Python tutorials and you can easily go through the entire lecture and then come back here to understand the concept of decorators. So let's go ahead and write our first decorator. But don't think of this as a decorator itself. I want you to think about it as a normal function. That way your understanding of decorator will become even much easier. Alright, so let's go ahead and write a normal function. Here 
I'm going to write the calculate time function again and just watch how I'm writing it because I'll be writing it in a different way. So here I can say def calculate time and then as a parameter I'm going to pass in a function. Okay. Now inside calculate time function I'm going to define a nested function. So here I can say def and let's go ahead and call the nested function as a time wrapper. All right, and inside the time wrapper nested function, basically, I'm going to do uh, calculate the start and end time for running a function, and uh, we are going to return that function. So here, inside time wrapper, uh, wrapper, let's go ahead and pass two parameters, x comma y. So basically, these two parameters are uh, uh, supposed to be passed uh, for calculating addition or subtraction. All right, and then here I can say. Inside the time wrap, uh, wrapper function, I can uh, say start equal to time dot time, and then uh, I already have passed my function as a parameter in the calculate time function. And like I said, we uh, inside your nested function, you can access the variables uh, in the enclosing scope, right? So basically, whatever parameter you passed in uh, pass in the outside function. You can access it so here I'm going to say print function and then we are going to pass in x comma y as parameter all right nothing complicated and then I'm going to say end equal to time dot time again and then I'm going to return end minus start so basically it is going to print the uh, result of the function that we pass in as a parameter and then it is also going to return us the total time it took to run that function. Now this is my time wrapper nested function and then outside the function all I'm going to do is apply the concept of closure. So basically I'm, I'm just going to say return time wrapper right without any parenthesis all right seems fam uh, familiar and this is very easy to understand all right it's a normal function this is how I'm executing it now outside the function let's go ahead and call our calculate time function so here I can say result equal to calculate time and then let's say we want to pass in add numbers as our parameter all right so I'm gonna go ahead and pass in the add numbers function as our parameter without parentheses again and then I can say print result now what will happen if i call calculate time it is going to return me a function right so it is going to return me this time wrapper function and then the time wrapper function expects two parameter to go ahead and run this add numbers function so let's say we pass in 10 comma 3 okay now if i run this you see it returned us the sum of 10 and 3 and it also returned us the time it took to run this function believe me or not this is our first decorator why this calculate time function takes in a function as a parameter it returns a function uh, it is also modifying the functionality of our basic function the basic functionality is add numbers so it is going to add the two numbers but we are also adding the additional functionality of calculating the time it takes to run this function so this is in a way a python decorator here in fact if i pass in subtract numbers without parenthesis and then I run this you can see it returns us the uh, difference between 10 and 3 and also the time it took to execute the function so now we can use it anywhere we want however I do understand what you might be thinking it is still manual I still have to pass in you know subtract numbers one by one how to change that to change that we have to understand the syntax of python decorator so here let's go ahead and remove this completely and then I'm going to say here, let's say we are uh, experimenting with subtract numbers and here I can say at the rate calculate time. This is the syntax of a Python decorator. Here you see it is returning us an error, unresolved reference error. Why is that? Because we are defining or we are, you know, referencing the calculate time decorator before it has been initialized, right? So here. If I do this, it is not going to throw me any error. So basically after the calculate time function has been defined. So now if I say print subtract time, subtract numbers, and then I pass in 10 comma 3, 
you would expect that it is only going to return you the difference right but no check it out again so see it returned us the difference and it also returned us the time it took to run this function so basically now i can use any number of function i want i can define anything i want and all i have to do is define calculate time as a decorator and then let's say i do it for add numbers and then you can see we are adding numbers but then we are also having that additional functionality that we want so this is the advantage of python decorator and this is how exactly a python decorator works so that's it for decorators in the next video we'll talk about passing parameters inside a decorator and debugging decorators thank you guys i will see you in the next tutorial